So we said that the focus of this lecture is on damages and defenses. And a defense is really an excuse for non-performance. It is a legal justification for a breach of a contract. Yes, you breached the contract, but you had a good reason. And so we'll focus on what some of those reasons may be. Now, a court can excuse a party's non-performance, a breach, in certain circumstances. Number one of which is impossibility of performance, meaning I could not perform. If I have, an, uh, if I have a contract with you and you're going to sell me certain goods and the goods are placed on the warehouse dock ready for my, uh, for my transportation company to pick them up, and that night um, a hurricane blows up and washes away all the goods, you didn't go through with the contract, but that was because you couldn't, because a hurricane came and took all the goods away. So impossibility of performance. It was impossible for you to perform. Frustration of purpose means the, folk, the purpose of the contract was lost. If you have a contract to take delivery of certain goods at some point in the future, but in the meantime, your uh, company goes out of business, then the whole purpose of that future contract is, uh, is meaningless. So frustration of purpose can be a reason. The one we're going to focus on, the one you really need to know, is what we call Im impediment beyond control. Article 79 of the CISG provides that a party's not liable for a failure to perform obligations if it was due to an impediment beyond control. And what, we'll talk a little bit more about it, but essentially an impediment beyond control means it, something happened that was outside of your ability to deal with that. So we mentioned a hurricane, the hurricane, or a lightning strike, or some other natural disaster. For this CISG exemption for impediments beyond control to apply, we must determine that the impediment was not reasonably foreseeable at the time of contract. It was not foreseeable that the hurricane would arise and wash away all the goods. Now, of course, foreseeability is going to, to differ depending on the circumstances there. If the goods are to be per, uh, picked up in Iowa, for instance, and a hurricane washes away the goods, that's not foreseeable. If the goods are going to be picked up in um, Miami, Florida, and a hurricane washes away the goods, you could argue that that was actually foreseeable at the time of contract. Furthermore, the impediment must be unavoidable. You could not avoid the impediment and had, you had no control over the impediment. And you must give notice to the other party of the impediment and why it is affecting the contract. So you give notice to the party of what has occurred and you must say this is what is going to happen to the contract. Either you're not going to perform or you're going to perform late or you're going to give a partial shipment, you're going to partially perform. Those three things have to be there in order to claim this defense. And this is a, this is, this defense really means you're not liable. The, you breached, you failed to perform, but if I can prove impediment beyond control, then that means that I'm not liable. I don't have to pay you damages. I don't have to keep up my end of the bargain. 